This will be the eleventh message on the new covenant. It's an important perspective that I seek to develop here tonight that the promises of the old covenant do not transfer over to the new covenant. It's necessary to establish this because this is being preached in our day. And uh, the, what we call the mega ministers that are on the television that have access to the whole world, almost to a person preach this. Promises of the Old Covenant, you be in the head and not the tail, mm -hmm. so forth, all transfer over to the New Covenant. All right, I'm going to dispute that tonight, show you that that's not the case. Now, it is important to refresh our minds with the significant differences that exist between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. The Old Covenant or Old Testament is not Genesis through Malachi. Let's, yeah. Surely people know that by now, but that's, that's not what it is. That's not the way the Holy Spirit talks. That's not the way He uses it yeah. uh -huh. at all. And the Old Covenant is not the law. The, old, the law are, is the words right. yep. of the covenant. The covenant was, all that God has said, we will do. Amen. That was the covenant. Yeah. Not some that we'll try and do. The old covenant was that we'll, we'll try mm -hmm. and do it. The covenant was, all that you have said, we will do. Yeah. <clears throat> now, the new covenant is everlasting. It's called the Everlasting Covenant, Hebrews 13, 20. The Old Covenant fades away. See? The New Covenant had, the Old Covenant had many sacrifices. The New Covenant has one sacrifice. In the, under the Old Covenant, the blood of animals be was prominent under the new covenant the blood of a person the person of Christ is prominent the old covenant there was a worldly inheritance that's all it promised a worldly inheritance the new covenant has an eternal yeah. inheritance the old covenant had a mediator on earth the new covenant has a mediator in heaven the Old Covenant was based on works. The New Covenant is based on faith. Mm -hmm. The Old Covenant had words of commandments. Mm -hmm. The New Covenant has words of promise. So those are just some, yeah. some differences. Now I want to take some time here to speak about the promises under the Old Covenant. Now, the, my postulate is the Old Covenant promises do not transfer over to the, to the New Covenant. Now, here I, uh, here's, I'm going to give you some examples of the promises. Exodus 15:26 says, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all of his statutes. Now here's the promise. I will put none of those diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. That's the promise. I will put none of the diseases on you that I... See, some people say God doesn't put disease on anybody. This is God talking. I'll put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians. Now I want to read uh, 
to read some of these promises. One, it's necessary that God's people be conversant about them. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, is uh, my focus at this point. Verses uh, 1. Is it come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou wilt hearken unto the voice of the Lord. Blessed shalt thou be in the city. Blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket, which you bring in, and thy store, which you, which you keep. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee, if thou wilt keep the commandments of the Lord of thy God and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain in thy, in thy land and in his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only. You will always be on top. Thou shalt not be beneath, if thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee to observe and to do them. That's a quite a, <laughs> a quite a catalog. Now, don't miss the, uh, the, the stipulation. If thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I observe thee, which I, uh, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them, and thou shalt not go aside from any, from any, uh, from any of the words which I command thee, this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. That's just, that's a stipulation. Amen. All these promises were contingent. Mm -hmm. yep. Not one single one of these promises ever happened if that contingency was not met. Amen. David is a man after God's own heart and his enemies didn't run from him, let me tell you. Right. Yep. The Psalms are filled with his enemies, yeah. pleading for God, him pleading to God, turn them aside. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's to, those stipulations have to be mm -hmm. kept in mind. Now let's uh, let's read some more here. Leviticus twenty six, chapters twenty six, verse thirteen. This was stipulation. I am the Lord your God was brought you forth out of the land of Egypt that ye would should not be their bondmen and I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you to go upright. But if ye will not hearken unto me 
and will not do all my commandments, all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments and break my covenant, I will also do this unto you. And then he tells you what he's going to do. Not very pleasant things at all. As for the promises that he made, they also they had to do with external life. Every, every one of them with external life. Let me read some more. Deuteronomy 7. I do, I'm taking the time to do this because I don't think some people know these promises were given. Deuteronomy 7, commencing verse 12. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware to his fathers, and he will love thee and bless thee, and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb, and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, thy wine, thine oil, and the increase of thy kind, kind or cattle, and the flocks of thy sheep, in the land which he swore unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you, or among your cattle. The Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou wast upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eyes shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for that will be a snare unto thee. Again, all temporal, nothing eternal, and the stipulation was, you've got to do yeah. everything I said all the time. Yeah. Deuteronomy 8, 1 says, all the commandments which I command you this day shall ye observe to do. All of, all of them. Yes. Not some of them. This is the old covenant. We're talking about the old covenant. Amen. All of them. That ye may live, that ye may observe to do them, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto his fathers. All right, I'm going to draw some conclusions. There's, there's more of this. I just kind of read some introduction, introduction, introductory scriptures about these promises. They all are contingent upon total, perfect, unwavering obedience. And Israel agreed to do this. They said, all that thou said, we will do. So that, was the, that was the covenant. All of them had to do with this world and when you were in the flesh. None of them had to do with heaven. None of them had to do with after you die. Without one, not one word was promised under the old covenant as applied after you die. Not one syllable. It all had to do with here and now. Yeah. And those promises still only have to do with here and now. There are people mm -hmm. preaching these yeah. in the name of Christ yeah. to people today and offering them as a kind of a utopia. Mm. Yeah. Now, this is happening in our day. Some of us never thought we'd live to see this happen, but this is happening. And people are uh, swallowing it up. Here's something else to realize that no generation of Israel ever, ever, not for one day, experienced these things. No record of anybody ever experiencing these things. All of them were subject to chastening, correction. Now, there's a point of clarity I need to make here. There's no question that God can do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. All of these things we read, I mean, God can do this. Mm -hmm. He can make a person the head and not the tail. He can make a person so they never have to borrow and they always can lend. He, yeah. God can cause this to happen. Yeah. But he nowhere said he was going to do it 
if people didn't do everything he asked them to do or commanded them to do. Everything. God cannot contradict his character. He's a holy God. As a holy God, he cannot bless an unholy people. And people that teach he can have led the people astray. They've lied. God can't do this. God can't take his love and his grace and his mercy and confirm it and confer it upon an unholy people. That's why you have to be born again. That's why there's such a thing as a new creation. That's why there's such a thing as justification. That's why. Because God can't bless an unholy people. But there are all kinds of people think he can. This, uh, under the old covenant, this was, uh, this was the arrangement. <coughs> now the promises of the new covenant. Let's look at the promises of the new covenant. Kind of compare notes here. First of all, the new covenant itself is spelled out in detail. In prophecy, it's in Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. And it wasn't like repeated. See, the curses and the blessings of the old covenant were repeated. This isn't so about the, the new covenant was, that was promised one time. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. But it is repeated. In Christ is repeated. Mm -hmm. Hebrews the 8th chapter and Hebrews the 10th chapter. Mm -hmm. Go over it. Now let's first of all look at the covenant itself. The words of the covenant of the old covenant. The words of the old covenant was, Thou shalt, thou shalt, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. See, that was the... <coughs> they were all what the people should do. The words of the covenant... We're not a proclamation of what God was going to do. They're a proclamation of what men were to do. Yeah. Now, here's the new covenant. There's no commandments in it. I know people say, whoa, you mean there's no commandments? I said there's no commandments in the new covenant. Yeah. I'm going to stick yeah. by it. Yeah. The new covenant itself does yeah. not contain any commandment. Right. Here's what it does contain. I will write my laws on their heart and put them on their mind. That's yeah. uh -huh. Hebrews 8, 10. Well, that's something God's going to do, see? That's not what men are to do. That's what God will do. Secondly, everyone from the least of you to the greatest will know the Lord. That wasn't true of Israel. They didn't know the Lord. That, in fact, the prophets would say such things as, my people do not know me. Which is why people perish for lack of knowledge. It wasn't lack of technicality language. He, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. These people quoting this text all the time today don't not know what they're talking about. You don't know what to eat, you'll get sick. That's not what that's talking about. Talking about the knowledge of God. The people perish because they didn't know God. They weren't familiar with God. We know they weren't because they violated what he said. Yeah, they wouldn't listen to him. Mm -hmm. They were stubborn and hard-hearted. See, these conditions exist today. These conditions exist today, mm -hmm. but the people that are stubborn and hard-hearted are told that God loves them. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. yeah. Am I right? This is what the people are told. Mm -hmm. That's not what it says in the Scripture. Amen. Anyone that's stubborn, hard-hearted, belligerent, won't listen, there's not any commitment of God to do them good any place. Mm -hmm. Rebellious people will not be blessed by God at any time. They weren't under the law. They sure aren't going to be under Christ. See, there's going to be a major transformation mm -hmm. yes. take place. That's why this new covenant... Everyone will know me from the least to the greatest. They'll have a sense of me. They aren't going to be basically and fundamentally ignorant of what God is like. 
They'll know it. No, no, how, not by proclamation. They'll know it intuitively. They've been reconciled to God. See, they've been reconciled to God. They know Him. They're not ignorant of Him. And people, God would be merciful to their unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Unrighteousness is, some say. And He would remember their sins and iniquities no more. See, that's what God, God will do. All promises, no, no commandments. And that's, that was the co whole covenant. I, yeah. it's, that's a whole new covenant. This is the covenant that I will make after those days, saith the Lord. And then he says these words. In between our former state and the state where he does this, that's where reconciliation, sanctification, yeah. uh -huh justification, recreation, that all of that takes place before this starts to be done. It's a different kind of covenant. The basis for the work being done is what Jesus did, not what you do. Amen. See, now the old covenant, the basis was what you do. That's not the basis of the new covenant. It's what Jesus did. So let's... Let's go over briefly what Jesus did. Number Hebrews 9.26, he put away sin. Yeah. See, that was never done under the law. There wasn't any sacrifice that put away sin. Right. Yeah. In fact, every year at the year of the atonement, a remembrance was made of sin because it wasn't put away. Their conscience remained defiled because it wasn't put away. But here's something Jesus did now. This, he did this. He did this. He put away sin. Yeah, yeah, and sin put away has no power. Amen. <laughs> hmm? You can't become enslaved to sin that's been put away. Yeah, amen. Galatians 3.13 says, He redeemed us from the curse of the law. The curse of the law was, you don't do this, cursed will be, and he itemizes all things. He redeemed us from the curse. Yeah. He moved us out from under. Yes. Who did that? Jesus did that. Amen. Did, Amen. You didn't move yourself out from under the curse. That's right. Jesus did. He made us free. That's what something Jesus did. See, the old covenant stipulated you've got you've got to do what I told you to do. The new covenant says Jesus did what God told him to do. Yeah. That's the basis for the, for the blessing. He, he made us free. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith he hath, Christ has made us free. Amen. See, yeah. Jesus said, if the Son makes you free, you're free indeed. Yeah. Sin continued to dominate Israel. Mm -hmm. But when the Son makes you free, sin stops dominating the individual. Amen. You're not dead to the flesh to live after the flesh. See, you're free indeed. The prison doors are hanging wide open. You just walk out. You're so free, you can resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You're so free, you can reject ungodliness and worldly lusts. Amen. And it's righteously sober and godly in this present world. See, that's a, But that's because of what Jesus did. Jesus suffered for us. 1 Peter 4 1. Christ has suffered for us. Israel had to suffer for themselves. Nobody suffered for them. They had to pay the penalty themselves. Jesus, had, we're made accepted in him. Amen. Ephesians 1 6. He is, God has made us accepted in the beloved. Capital B. That's Christ. Yeah. You're not accepted because you've met the requirement. You're accepted because God made you accepted. And you, should, you should be able, of course, to put all this together that the thing that brings it home to you is, is you receive Christ. You believe on Christ and then all of these transfer to your account. Amen. The condition is your faith in Christ. Yes. That's the condition. Yes. Faith always obeys. Faith never disobeys. Yeah. 
Faith never dishonors God. Faith never balks at God. Whoever's strong in faith will not even think about the outward circumstances. He'll know God's able to do what he's yeah. promised. See? And that, that's, that's a condition. See, the word, under the old covenant, what you did, that was the condition. But in Christ, believing on Christ, all that believe on him are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Amen. That's Acts 13, 39. That's the condition because he did everything. Mm -hmm. In him we have redemption. Not we can have. Yeah. Not we can have. We have it. Yes. Redemption. That is, we have been, the purchase has been made legitimate. Christ bought you. You're not your own. You yeah. really do belong to Christ. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. God didn't... Israel... God claimed them as his own. Mm -hmm. But they defected. They defected from it. You say, well, isn't it possible to detect from, defect from Christ? Yeah. But that's not the gospel. The that's gospel right. isn't, and you can defect from Christ. Right, yeah. The gospel is that you can be lost, mm. even though you can, mm. <laughs> you can be. That's true. But that's not the gospel. Amen. That isn't what we preach. No. I know it. And I was younger, we'd say, oh, we believe you can fall away. One day it came to me, I wonder if there's something else we believe. Is yeah. this the only thing we believe? Yeah, you you can fall away, but this isn't the good news. This isn't That's what right. we preach to people. Yeah. We remind this to people who are slopping around not living by faith. But the reason people fall mm. is because they quit believing. Yeah. They quit trusting. They quit having faith. That's when they fail. Because yeah. we're kept by the power of God, Peter said, through faith. Amen. Why is it that way? Because Jesus did yes. what was required. Is Jesus, he made peace. Colossians 1.21. Because there wasn't peace between God and man. Whatever you think about, whatever you may think about the love of God, whatever you may think about it. And now God loves everybody and God loves the world and so forth. Whatever you may think about that, there's no peace between God and man, yes. mm -hmm. apart from Jesus making it. Jesus made peace because yes. God could not get along with humanity. Yes. Amen. Jesus resolved that. You, you had no power to resolve that. Your only power was you were given to believe. Mm -hmm. yes. That's what settles, yeah. settled yeah. this issue between you and God. He blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. The handwriting of ordinances was not the Ten Commandments. It was what we call the ceremonial law, where God told, he told the people how to keep the Ten Commandments. Don't eat this, you can't eat that, don't plow this way, plow that way, don't make your garments this way, do it that way. See? He spelled out, told them when to keep the feast, where to keep the feast, what to do with the feast. That was the handwriting of ordinances. Yeah. God didn't give the Ten Commandments and then say, oh, God, just do your best to keep them. But he told them precisely how to keep them. Yeah. Don't covet your neighbor's house. Don't covet your neighbor's wife. Don't covet your neighbor's property. Don't covet your animals of your neighbor. See, he, he spelled it all out. But that's been blotted out. You don't have details like that in Christ. He gives you a new heart. That you actually have a heart for, for purity. Mm -hmm. You actually have an ambition to be accepted by God. Amen. Your, your, your nature has been changed. Amen. But it's because of what Jesus did. That's why. Yes. And you tapped into it by believing Amen. on Jesus. Mm -hmm. By one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. That's Hebrews 10:14. Mm -hmm. Many offerings under the law. Jesus offered one offering... And everybody who trusts in him has been made acceptable. Now, what has God done for... I read you what, under the old covenant, what God said he'd do. Uh, what has God said he'd do for us in the new covenant? What has he done for us? Well, here's one. He gave us his Holy Spirit. How's that? 
He has sent the Spirit into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Galatians 4, 6. That was never done under the law. That was never done under the law. Why not? Because nobody met the stipulations of the law. Perfect obedience in all things. Do everything I tell you to do. When I tell you to do it, how I tell you to do it, all the time, no infractions. Adam taught us it's just one, one, just one mistake. That's, you're not even allowed one mistake. Huh? Under the old cover, you were not allowed to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Everybody realizes that, don't you? Yeah. Uh -huh. You were not under the law. You were not permitted to make even one mistake. Adam wasn't, and neither were the Israelites. Yeah, yeah. One mistake broke the law, uh -huh. broke the covenant. Mm -hmm. So God now has given us his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of what Jesus did. And because we believe it, yes, that's right. we believe the record God has given of his son mm -hmm. and get the benefit because of Amen. it. He has, according to Romans 12, 3, dealt to us a measure of faith. That means he's given, you become utilitarian in the kingdom of God. A measure of faith means you've been given something that adapts you to serve in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Be like a vice president, uh -huh. Uh -huh. steward. Mm -hmm. He gives something into your charge. He, he didn't do that with Israel. Well, he gave them a land of Canaan. What did they do? They filled it up with corruption. Huh? Even at Mount Sinai, when he gave them the law, it hadn't been, it hadn't been a little more than a, than a month passed, and they already were uh -huh. breaking every one of the commandments. Yeah. Uh -huh. Why? Because the law made nothing perfect. Yes. Amen. That's why. So he's dealt to us a measure of faith. See, how does that stack up with being blessed in the field and blessed in the city and your, your flocks being increased, good health? How does that compare with that? Or he has appointed us to obtain salvation. This is 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. God has not appointed us to wrath. That's eternal wrath we're talking about. God's not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. How does that stack up with those promises I read you from the Old Covenant? Yeah. Uh -huh. In the day when God's wrath is going to be poured out, the New Covenant gives you exemption from being affected by that wrath. How does that compare now with not being sick? Huh? Yeah. We just ask that people just be honest. Yeah. How does that compare? Here's something he did. He quickened us. He made us alive. Yes. We were dead in trespasses and sin. Ephesians 2, 1 says, unresponsive to God. And he quickened us. He made us alive. When we were dead toward him, he made us alive. Yeah. Why did he make you alive? It's because of what Jesus did. And because you you believed what Amen. you believed what God yeah. you believed what you, God said He did. Uh -huh. See, God told us what Jesus did. Uh -huh. Take it away, sin, make it the end of it, and so forth. Bring it in everlasting righteousness. He told you what Jesus did, but until you believe it, uh -huh. it gives you no advantage. Right. These are just not academic statements. He quickened us, made us alive. So our conscience was purged from dead works. <laughs> so your past didn't bother you anymore. Yeah. What was that? That that God did that because of what Jesus did yeah. and because you believed what God said Jesus yeah. did. He seated us together with Christ in heavenly places. Now how does that compare with being seated in Canaan and being given the land of Canaan? How does that how does that compare? Who's going to compare being seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus as Ephesians 2, 6? Who can compare that with being blessed in the city and blessed in the field and not ever borrowing and being able to lend? And how, does that, how does that compare? If, if you wonder how just think about it after you die. And after, after Israel died, that, that was it. They didn't have any, any of the promises, did it? None of the promises applied to after you died. Not a single one of them under the law. And you've been justified from all things. 
from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. That's Acts 13, 39. All right, how does that compare with your flocks always being able to reproduce themselves and yet your fruit, the, the trees that you plant bearing fruit and your grain that you plant yield? How does that compare with, with those? Let's, let's take this matter just a little bit further. What's promised to those that are in Christ Jesus? Now, we read to you what was promised under the first covenant. We read what was promised. And it'll pay you to kind of go over those things. Deuteronomy 28 is a kind of a principal text, but then there's a lot of other texts. You'll be able to find the, the references, parallel passages, where you tell what it's going to do. And what I'm going to mention now, you want to compare with those promises. Now remember my, my postulate is what I'm preaching on is the promises of the old covenant do not transfer to the new. Why not? Because it's the new is a different kind of covenant. Yeah, that's right. that it's out of order to talk about physical blessings in the new covenant. Yes. It's not that God can't do this. Yeah. Understand it's not it's not that God is can't do this. He can do all this, but it's like a so what if he did? Yeah, uh -huh, yeah. So what if he did do that? Uh -huh. You lost it all when you die. Yeah, uh -huh. None of it moves over into the other world. Right. Yeah. None, of it, none of it follows you after you die. Not, not one single promise that was given under the law had any validity after you died. Uh -huh. And before you died, you had to perfectly keep the law to get any one of them. Yeah. All right, now here's... This, let me give you some of these better promises that are under the new covenant. We have eternal life. This is the promise that he hath promised us, even life everlasting. <laughs> well, how does, that, how does that compare? Everlasting life. In hope of eternal life, which God has promised which God which cannot lie, promised before the world began, eternal life. How does that compare with a lot of, uh, with flocks? Mm -hmm. How does it compare? Eternal life. How's this? Match this up now with yeah. the other promises under the covenant. If we suffer, we shall reign with him. Yeah. Reign with him? <laughs> yeah. How does that compare with being the head and not the tail? How does that compare with lending and, and not borrowing? Tell me how that compares. Will reign world without end. Yeah. Here's another one. An eternal inheritance. He's promised not, Hebrews 9.15. He promised an eternal mm -hmm. inheritance. So the land of Canaan was an inheritance. Right. It sure wasn't eternal. If you died, you left it. It, it. it didn't transfer over. You couldn't keep the land of Canaan after you died, even if you were living in it. Right, yeah. If you died while you were living in Canaan, when you died, you lost your citizenship in, <laughs> in Canaan. See? But we have an eternal inheritance. Yeah, yeah. How does this sound? We have access to God with confidence. Yeah. No Israelite had this. Israelite wanted to have contact with God. They had to go to the priest, high priest. Yeah. The high priest had to intercede for them. Huh? Mm -hmm. They couldn't even offer up their own sacrifices. The high priest had to offer up their sacrifices for them. See? They didn't have access to God. The Israelite didn't have access to God. Mm -hmm. You do. Yeah. Why do you? Because of what Jesus did. That's Amen. why. And because you believe what God has said he did. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to preach what Jesus did. Yeah. Amen. It's important to, because that's going to be the thing you've got to believe. That's what you've got to believe. You, you're not asked to believe, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. I can do it. You can do it. Now you can do it. Try hard. Try harder. Mm -hmm. Try harder. You, you don't have to smoke. Try harder. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not what we're told. We're told, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. See, whatever God asks you to do, if it's leap over a mountain or, run, or leap over a wall or run through a troop, yeah. you can do it. 
access to God, a purged conscience. Purge your con the blood of Christ will purge your conscience from dead works to or so you can serve God. Yeah. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. See, you can't serve God if your conscience is bothering you. Can't do it. And the, under the law, this is all they just had a defiled conscience. They couldn't get rid right, of a yeah. defiled conscience. Uh -huh. On the day of atonement, the, the yeah. peak day of the year, <laughs> the high priest would go in and he'd offer sacrifices for himself first and for the sins of all the people. But after they were all done, the sacrifices stirred up their memory. Yeah. Uh -huh. It stirred up their memory right. that they'd sinned. Mm -hmm. They couldn't get rid of the guilty conscience but in Christ you can your conscience can be purged from dead works and then you serve the living God why is it that professed church members <coughs> don't serve God because their conscience won't let them I'm telling you the truth here their conscience won't let them but see the thing that makes this so wrong is that in Christ there's provision made to purge the conscience of dead works so you can serve, you can walk in God's courts, you can come to God, mm -hmm. you can serve God. If you have sinned, you can just, you can confess it, yeah. own up to it, confess it to God. Mm -hmm. He'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Yes. And he'll strengthen you in that area. Once you're, when God forgives the sin, he strengthens you in that, in that area in which you, in which you sinned. See, how does that purge conscience, how does that stack up next to having a big harvest? Huh? How does it compare with that? How about this one? Here's something. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Yeah. This didn't happen to David. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Devil brought him down on the rooftop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Devil provoked him a number of Israel and he did. Was it because he was weak? Oh, no, he was a head and shoulders above everybody else. Yeah. But under the old covenant, they didn't have promises like this. Yeah. So before you criticize Sarah and Abraham, and yeah. before you criticize them, remember, they didn't have, they didn't have what you have. Amen. The devil didn't, like, run away from them. Mm -hmm. But this is one of the promises now. You resist the devil. Resist doesn't mean you duke it out with them. That's not what it means. It means you refuse to give heed to him. Mm -hmm. Amen. You won't listen to him. Yeah. There's nothing he can do about it. There's nothing he can do about it. Why? Because of what Jesus did. And because you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Here's something else. <clears throat> God can give you the spirit of wisdom and understanding so you can have spiritual knowledge. How does that compare with the promises under the old covenant? Mm -hmm. To have spiritual understanding, be able to see through things, yeah. be able to spot error, be able to see a blessing and see it's a, that it's yeah. attainable. How does how does that kind of thing compare with the promises under the law? And how does this Philippians four seven the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind? Amen. <laughs> How's that for you? Keep your heart. And your mind. Amen. See, under the law, the heart was always defiling people. Their mind was always defiled. That's why people. This is why people sin. This is why they're slaves to sin. Their heart and their mind aren't set at peace with God. But then Christ Jesus, the peace of God keeps your heart and mind keeps it stable, so that you're not moved away from the hope of the gospel. See, you can't. These commandments, these uh, promises under the old covenant, they're misfits. You try, and, you try and wedge them in to these kind of promises, and they just don't fit. How's this one? Lord's going to will give me the the righteous judge will give me a crown of righteousness, which He'll give to all those that love His appearing. How does a crown of righteousness? How does a crown of righteousness <coughs> compare? 
with having a lot of sheep or a lot of cattle <clears throat> or never being sick. Yeah. Come on now, how does it compare? See, it, it, there are, it's of a different gender. That's right. That's right. It's of a different order, completely different order. These are promises of a higher order. They will not fit into a do-it-yourself system. They won't fit in with it. See, God looks at you, and the sole basis upon which he blesses you is your attitude toward his son. That's right. Amen. This is the sole basis for his consideration of you. If you don't honor his son, it doesn't make any difference how seemingly spotless your life is or what you've managed to get done. If you do not believe on his son and lean the weight of your soul upon him, mm -hmm. depending on Jesus to take you through, if you don't do this, you cannot in any way please God. Amen. But if you do, <laughs> that is a great pleasure to God. Amen. And you will get the benefits of the yes. covenant. You see, the promises of the old covenant, they're like an old wine skin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and instead of, I mentioned comparing them to they don't transfer to the new, or to put it the way that Jesus put it, you can't take the wine of new life and pour it in the old wine skin of the old covenant. Yeah, there yeah. it <laughs> you become a worse sinner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Can you see that? Yeah. You become a worse sinner yeah. mm -hmm. if you try and adapt mm -hmm. the new covenant to that old order. It's like putting a piece of new cloth on an old garment. It just won't work. So when you hear about these promises of the old covenant, first of all, know that God can do all those. God can make your enemies be at peace with you. Make no mistake about this. God can bless the fruit of your womb and bless the cattle, and he, he can do all of this. And he's not saying that he'll never do anything like this, but this is not what the covenant is about. If anything like this happens to you, it's like a bonus. Amen. It's not the meat and core of the thing, because... All of that stuff you'll have to leave behind mm -hmm. when you leave the world. And you can get in circumstances of life where such things don't make any difference to you. There's some people tonight that are miserable, mm -hmm. that have a lot of outward benefits and blessings. Mm -hmm. That's right. But they don't satisfy. See, they can't satisfy the soul. Mm -hmm. That's right. You can't bring something like that over into... Christ Jesus, and when people try and do this, they've hurt. They've hurt the people. They've driven. They've like pushed them back further from Christ. Now, some people they say God will bless you like if you win souls. That's the particular slant they'll have on that. If you win a lot of people to Christ, that somehow will cover up <laughs> for all of your other deficiencies. But this is not true. That's right. This is not true to begin with. There's a lot of soul winning that, you, there's a lot of assumption in it. Yeah. I don't like the kind of disciples that are being made today. Uh -huh. I don't like it. Something, something's missing, something bad wrong. Mm -hmm. And what's wrong is this. People are not being led to know what Christ has done and then to trust in Christ because he did it. That's what align, that is what will align you with the purpose of God, believing the record God has done, that God has given of his Son, and conducting yourself accordingly. Once you believe that record, you place all your reliance upon him You'll find yourself able to do whatever God tells you to do. You'll be able. You'll be able to do it. I can do all things. That's not talking about leaping tall buildings, you know. I can do all things <clears throat> through Christ who strengthens me. That, brother, to me is a wonderful, uh, wonderful word. Amen. Wonderful message.